Welcome to the uh, last module of this week. Um, so, in the problems that we did earlier, uh, we had skipped that small uh, portion about uh, finding the normal modes. We found the normal frequencies. So, in this uh, module, we will try and spend some time um, obtaining the normal modes for the coupled oscillations. So, just to make a very brief and quick recap of what we had done. So, we started with the coupled uh, system of equation. So, it could be for instance something like um, two or three uh, oscillators or particles which are coupled by a spring. So, I have in front of me one coupled system. So, the way to do it is you write down the equations of motion first and then see if by a simple trick of adding, subtracting whatever you can uncouple the equation. So, if I manage to do that, I have quite luckily solved the problem. If I have not done that, then start by assuming uh, solutions which are of the form a e per i omega t. For each of the particles, you assume that the displacements are of this form and crucially the important uh, point is that uh, this omega that I have here has to be same for all the three. So, if I set it to oscillation, all of them together are going to show me one possible frequency of oscillation. Okay. So, again I stress that different parts of a coupled system cannot in general operate uh, under different frequencies, at least for the kind of problems uh, we are doing. So, once we determine these uh, different possible values of omega angular frequency, so we solved one part of the uh, problem which is finding normal frequencies or normal mode frequencies. One part that is left is to find the normal modes themselves. So, in simple terms, normal modes are simply the collective pattern of oscillation that are shown by your coupled uh, system. So, when you have a coupled system, it could be made of two particles, three particles, a large number, maybe in general n particles. So, when you see something like this, you are not really worried about what is one particle doing out there. So, you are asking question about what is the kind of dynamics uh, that is exhibited by all the particles collectively together. So, we are interested in collective oscillations. So, these normal modes are different possible collective oscillations, collective dynamics that can be exhibited by a coupled uh, system. So, now let us uh, go to the um, uh, part about finding the normal modes. So, the first problem that we did was uh, this uh, problem of um, two pendula and they are independent pendula, but once you couple them with the spring whose spring constant is k, then they become a coupled system. So, you assume that um, a mass of the two bobs are same and it is equal to m and l is the length of the uh, string of each pendulum and it is equal for both the pendulum. Okay. And if you remember, so we wrote down the equations of motion for the system and then we assumed solutions of the following form. So, we said that, so we called one of them as the x pendulum with some uh, displacement x and the second one we said is a y pendulum, we called it a y pendulum and it has displacement y. I assumed solutions of the form x of t is a e power i omega t and y of t is b e power i omega t. So, you substitute this in the equations of motion and finally, write everything in terms of um, coefficients of a and b and you will end up with this sort of equation that I have here. 
and we wanted to solve for the two unknowns which are there in these equations. The two unknowns are A and B and as you can see a very trivial solution for this case is when A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0, but we do not want that trivial solution simply because it would simply mean that there is no oscillations because the amplitudes are 0 all the time there is no oscillations we do not want uh, such a solution and this solution will always exist, but we should uh, ignore that solution. Are there values of A and B which is non-zero for which this two sets of equation are uh, satisfied. So, you rewrite uh, this equation here um, uh, the one that is written here in matrix vector form very simple to do that and let us call this matrix M and chi as the vector of our vector made up of A and B. Uh, then this matrix vector equation can simply be written as uh, M times chi is equal to 0 and for non-trivial solutions to exist determinant of M should be 0. We were able to obtain the values of uh, normal mode frequencies and for this problem if you remember clearly we obtained two possible uh, frequencies one is omega 1 square which is equal to omega 0 square and the second frequency was omega 2 square which is equal to omega 0 square plus uh, 2 omega s square. So, these are the possible normal mode frequencies that we had obtained. So, we was we had already solved this part of the uh, problem. Now, I will find the normal mode normal modes themselves and for each of these normal mode frequencies there will be a normal mode. So, corresponding to this there will be normal mode let me uh, call it chi 1 and corresponding to omega 2 there will be a second normal mode let me call it chi 2. So, let us start with omega 1 we will substitute this in our uh, matrix vector equation. So, I have just copied the uh, equation that we had before. Now, what I need to do is to substitute for this uh, value of omega square by omega 1 square. So, I would get the following uh, matrix vector equation. Now, I need to solve this for uh, A and B. So, if you do a overall change of sign in the second equation that is exactly the first equation. So, this equation can be uh, rewritten in a easier uh, form A minus B is equal to 0. So, I can cancel off omega s square throughout it is A minus B equal to 0 and this implies that A is equal to B. And since you have freedom to fix one of them I can say that B is equal to 1 in which case A will also be equal to 1 and uh, the solution that I get chi 1 will be A B which is equal to 1 comma 1. So, this is the normal mode corresponding to the frequency which is equal to uh, omega 0 square. Now, similarly I need to go through a similar procedure to find out uh, the second normal mode frequency. Let us do that. So, going back to the uh, equation uh, now for the second normal mode the frequency is uh, omega square will be omega 0 square plus 2 omega s square. Now, substitute this value of omega square uh, in this equation as we did before and if you do that and cancel off uh, certain omegas here is what uh, you will get. So, this is the equation that we have and now uh, if you uh, rewrite it as a standard uh, linear equation this would simply be a plus b equal to 0 and this would imply that a is equal to minus b as usual in this case we have 1 degree of freedom. So, if I set 
b is equal to 1, a would be equal to minus 1. So, now I have my second uh, normal mode chi 2 which will be uh, minus 1, 1. I have now both the uh, normal modes in I can now uh, write down the uh, general solution. Before we write down the general solution, let us look at the physical content of uh, the results that we have. So, the first normal mode is this vector 1, 1 and if you remember where it came from, it came from uh, the result that A is equal to B, A and B are amplitudes. So, here this is telling me that the two amplitudes of the two pendula are exactly equal at all times. So, the physical picture is their displacements are exactly like this, they are in phase. So, this is one of the uh, possible collective mode of oscillation for this system. So, they go together. So, that is this normal mode. On the other hand, if you look at the second normal mode chi 2 corresponding to uh, the value of um, uh, second frequency omega 2 square, there it tells me that um, A is equal to minus B or B equal to minus A, either way it is the same thing. So, here it tells me that one displacement is negative of the other and equal in magnitude. So, it is like this, they do this. So, two of those pendula would be oscillating in this uh, mode. So, that corresponds to the second mode. So, this entire system of two pendula coupled by a spring, they have only two normal modes, one where they are in phase like this and the other one where they are out of phase and like this. Now, in general any possible oscillation of this system can be written as a linear superposition of these two modes x of t and y of t. So, x and y are the original coordinate system in which we wrote down the equations of motion and we have the solution in precisely the same uh, coordinate uh, system. So, this here this whole thing constitutes a general system, a general solution where the any possible dynamics of this coupled system can be written as a superposition of um, these two normal modes which is what we have done here. And uh, in particular um, you could uh, adjust these amplitudes and in general phases as well to obtain a particular kind of oscillation uh, that this system might exhibit. So, that is the sort of significance of normal modes. Any solution that is exhibited by the system can always be resolved as linear superposition of its corresponding normal modes. Let us now go to the second problem that we had done uh, earlier and let us look at the solution and obtain the normal modes. So, this is a system of three blocks coupled by uh, springs. Uh, in this case, uh, we have assumed that the two springs uh, have exactly the same um, spring constant. We also assumed that um, to solve the problem originally we had to write down the equations of motion. We assume that these three blocks or balls could be called x1, x2, x3 blocks and the displacement of each one of them is x1, x2 and x3 as it, as it is uh, shown in this figure. So, then we went ahead wrote down the equations of motion and as usual our recipe says that assume solutions of the form a e power i omega t may be b e power i omega t c e power i omega t for x 1, x 2 and x 3 
substitute that in the equations of motion and finally you get this matrix vector equation m times chi is equal to 0. We put in the condition that determinant of m is equal to 0 and that gave us uh, 3 possible normal mode frequencies. Now the question is find normal modes. So as usual let us treat the first case when uh, or corresponding to the first case of omega which is equal to uh, omega square is omega 1 square and that is equal to 0 that corresponds to this. And the way we do the problem is substitute that value of omega here. So, put 0 uh, for wherever omega square occurs in this equation in this matrix vector equation and when I write down the resulting equation this is what I will get. Now I need to find suitable values of a, b and c which are non-trivial solutions. Now if you look at collectively these equations you will see that uh, if I take a and c to be 1 and also b to be 1 everything would be satisfied. So let us say that I take a is equal to b equal to c equal to 1. So if I do that then the first equation is satisfied which is this, this equation is satisfied and this equation will also be satisfied and this would also be satisfied. So my normal mode is 1, 1, 1. So that is for the first case. The second case corresponds to the mm, frequency omega 0 square. So here again the usual way is uh, substitute omega square to be omega 0 square in this equation that you see here right now, this one and you will get a simplified uh, matrix vector equation from which you determine a, b and c. So let us do that. If I now write the substitute omega square to be omega 0 square, this is what I will get and once again looking at this equation in entirety, it is very easy to see that if I take a to be 1 and b to be 0 and c to be minus 1, the set of equations will be satisfied. Hence my normal mode will be 1, 0, minus 1, that is chi 2. And similarly, we can go ahead and determine for the third case, which is omega square is equal to 3 uh, omega 0 square. Again, go through the usual procedure. So, this time I will directly write down what you should be getting. And again, I have 3 unknowns a, b, and c to be determined in a sort of consistent way and if you look at the equations, if you are more comfortable with it, uh, write it out in normal equation form and in this case we should be able to get the following result 1, minus 2 and 1. So now I have all the 3 normal modes, so chi 1 is 1, 1, 1, chi 2 is 1, 0, minus 1 and chi 3 is 1, minus 2 and 1 and of course we can write the general solution. So if you think about the physical picture that this conveys, uh, let us look at the two, e, two cases for which the frequencies, the normal mode frequencies are not 0, say the second case. So in this case it tells me that the A and C which are the amplitudes of the first and the third particle, they are off by a phase of pi. So which means that and the middle one is 0, so the middle one is going to be static and the ones which are on the either side of the middle one, they would be doing like this whereas the middle particle is not going to do anything. So that is one possible collective motion 
of the system and this corresponds to uh, frequency omega 0 square. It is easy to see why it should be so because the middle one is static, it is like not moving at all, you can imagine like it is a hard wall and the other two are simply uh, simple harmonic motions which depend only on the uh, spring constant of the corresponding springs which is why uh, the frequency is omega 0 square. On the other hand you go to the third case, in this case uh, the frequency is 3 omega 0 square, here it corresponds to uh, saying that uh, the middle one uh, let us say that these are the normal equilibrium positions of the three cases, the middle one would be shifted here like this and this would be shifted here and this would be shifted here. So, that is going to be the kind of uh, oscillation, the amplitudes are going to maintain this ratio throughout. So, that is the third uh, uh, case and the first case think about it what is omega equal to 0 basically meaning no frequency. So, it is not a periodic motion simply because uh, when would you get angular frequency 0. So, you would get that when time period is infinity, okay. so, it does not quite correspond to uh, any kind of oscillatory motion. Now, it is possible to write uh, a general uh, solution as a linear su superposition of all these three uh, cases and it is exactly the way we did for the previous uh, problem. So, here I have the general solution in front of me. So, again to reiterate the point that I have been saying in general if you have n particles there can be n normal modes, but in general any possible dynamics that is shown by a couple system can be written as a superposition of these normal modes, which is why it is easier to think of uh, the system as showing these normal canonical modes. From this we can manufacture pretty much any other dynamics that the system would uh, show by manipulating the phases and the amplitudes. There are more uh, problems of similar type in the assignments, I urge you to do it. <laughs>